Hello, I'm Steve from Higgy Pop, and today I'm joined by Yvette Fielding, the host and creator of Most Haunted, who's going to talk to us about her new book. Um, first off, Yvette, um, I've got to say congratulations on The Ripper of Whitechapel, which is released September 29th, pre-order now. Exciting, yeah. This is the second book in the series, and things get quite a lot darker, don't they? Um, right at the beginning, the attack on the headmaster is the stuff of nightmares, really, isn't it? I know. Um, I think I had nightmares after after writing that. Uh, yeah, this book has actually, I mean, every time I write one of these, I, I'm so concentrated on what I'm writing and the scenarios and the hauntings. And, and I think because some of the activity has actually happened to me and I've witnessed it, I think that's what makes it even more scarier for me anyway when I'm writing it and hence it has an effect when I try to go to sleep at night. Uh, but yeah, that that scene, you know, right at the beginning of the book where the the deputy headmaster is Mr. Wilson. He's just, you know, I mean, imagine seeing those two children, you know, stood there in their white nighties, but, you know, drenched to the skin and with their hair all long and, you know, and uh, yeah, really frightening. And then, of course, he sees the ghost of Jack the Ripper or mm. that's, you know, we don't know who it is. Um, and uh, yeah, he, uh, he, he gets uh, injured. Um, he gets burned. And that's something that I've witnessed for myself, as you know, with Most Haunted, you know, we've mm. had scratches and burns on. And I was a bit, I, I was a bit sort of, oh, you know, do I put this in? But then, you know, I spoke to the publishers and they said, no, if it's happened to you and it's true and it's real, then put it in. So that's what I've done. Yeah. You've, um, with Most Haunted in 2005, been on the trail of the ghost of Jack the Ripper yourself in the, in the East End for a live episode. Does anything that you discovered there kind of feed into the book at all? No, and I, I, I tell you why. It's because at that time we were being very heavily led by psychics and I didn't want to... Um, nothing that happened to me or the team sort of stuck sort of stuck out really um and it's so frustrating because i'd love to go back to all those places with me and the most wanted team as it is now mm. to see what we get you know and i think it's um as you know i've said this before there are millions of wonderful psychics out there are, that are the real deal but unfortunately you know we've had the you know the uh, unfortunate um you know, experience of of uh, you know who we think is is telling the, the truth and actually finding out later that they're not so of course you're you're led by what somebody's saying oh you know there's a there's a john here so you're like your investigation then switches to what one person is getting mm. um and i prefer not to do it that way so when i look back at that show um i i sort of i get frustrated like, oh i'd love to go back there and and do it with the team now but obviously other nasty things that happen in the book well and interesting things I guess you have experienced like you said the burning of the arms happened at East Drive and then there's the wet footprints as well which happened on the Queen Mary which is a really lovely moment yeah I mean I'd never forget that I mean we actually lived on that ship um for oh god a, 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 it seemed like an eternity it felt like we were there for years you know it was mm. it was bizarre but it was a wonderful experience and I'll never forget that that night when we found these little wet footprints, ch child's footprints, you know, um, well, we assumed they were child's uh, children's because they were quite small. But uh, I remember everybody being totally gobsmacked at uh, particularly the parapsychologist at where this water had come from. And so I love putting that in the book as well, you know, and, and uh, I think we took we took photographs of it. But I also think we we, we tried to get a sample of the water as well or. Um, which was really it was fascinating and obviously when it comes to ghost hunting I mean the kids in the book have got it really good with Uncle Rufus's inventions um, if there was one invention that he's made that you could bring into the real world and go ghost hunting with what would it be <laughs> oh that's a that's a good one well we've already got the tapping board haven't we more mm. or less I'd love to find oh I think I've mentioned to you before privately haven't I yeah but, you know I'd love to be able to find a whether it be a toy manufacturer or somebody to be able to actually um illuminate those letters so when the knock happens you know or words you know angry happy sad so on and so I'd love that um so we've already kind of got that but it'd be great to have that built and made properly um as I've described in, in the books um and let me just think now what's his oh no you see now there's a new invention in the third book that's coming out that's pretty cool I think oh, okay. it's really cool 
but Endeavour is 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 marvellous. I think that would, I, I like the image in my head of this wonderful suitcase sort of like pinging into life um, um, and it turns into what looks like a normal wardrobe, but inside it's this machine that can take um, the occupant to the veil um, and to transport trapped spirits, spirits that are in trouble or need help and they can take them to the light or as I call it in the book, the veil. Um, but that actually comes from the, um, uh, the during the spiritualist movement and the Victorians, they came up with, well, it's two brothers, actually, they came up with magicians, um, uh, um, a thing called the spirit cabinet. And they used it predominantly it was to start off with as almost like a magician's trick. So both men would sit inside this wardrobe, but they'd be tied, you know, tied down, their hands and legs would be tied. And then they put like tambourines and trumpets in there. And then lo and behold, the doors were closed and then they'd hear the tambourine shake or they'd hear the trumpet blow mm. and people are oh wow this is amazing but what happened was the spiritualist movement took this on and started using it in seances and you know it it, it proved to be a really useful tool and quite spectacular in to be able to in being able to communicate with the other side and so we had one here we actually our friends Paul and Helen made one for us and we had it in the front room and Carl sat inside it and had his hands and legs sort of tied to the chair and the whole thing was vibrating and shaking it was amazing and then my dad's head came out the top of it in it was solid his, oh, his wow. head. it was only there for three seconds but the three of us saw it and we were just like oh and then it, and then it was gone but it was absolutely incredible. And we've used them a few times. And if anybody at home fancies doing it, just get a pop-up tent, a pop-up tent in the corner of your seance room or in a haunted location, mm. put one in there and try it for yourself and ask the tent to move, to shake. You know, you've got to trust the person inside it. Um, we've had it walk across the floor on its own, which is incredible. So that's where the idea came from, the original spirit cabinet. I guess the only issue with Endeavour is that it's pedal powered, which is a bit too much effort for me on a ghost hunt, I think. Well, me too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but it's not too much effort for young youngins, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the um, book kind of cleverly ties in with an unresolved ghost encounter with Jack that the kids have at the start of the very first book. Is that something you planned from the start? Did you have that kind of direction in mind? I think must have done subconsciously i didn't I, I don't actually remember going right this is this we're going to do this here and then that's going to join up with it just flowed it just happened naturally so it's quite lucky really mm. um i think yeah like i say subconsciously it was always there i think at the beginning of, of the first book it was jack the ripper you know and uh and it's i wait for the ideas to pop into my head and i sometimes believe it's them saying right come on do this next here's an idea you know I mean yeah. often, I'm not saying it's the spirit world writing it but I think that they can help and give ideas and sort of guide um I mean Paul McCartney for instance he said he had a dream about yesterday didn't he, he said he woke up and the whole tune was in his head mm. everything and this you know famous um composers have written symphonies and had a dream about the notes and then you know so are we being given gifts are we all being given gifts? You know, some some creative people, uh, you know, they wake up, don't they, and say, I don't know where it came from. Obviously, this book, we get to kind of learn a little bit more about the um, background of some of the characters. We get to know them a bit better. And Clovis's heritage is hinted at a lot more. Um, but the book does feel quite kind of broad culturally anyway. You've got um, Anwar, the demonologist. Is that something that you were quite sort of conscious about writing the book um, as a children's author? Yeah, I think it's really important. I mean, it, it's it's very weird, isn't it? Anwar Sayer is actually, um, Sayer is my grandmother's uh, maiden name. So my grandmother came from Homs in Syria, which sadly has been <clears throat> blown to bits. Um, and I, I, really wanted to bring her into it and also my ancestry from that side of the family and this sort of mystical side of 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 that part of the world really um and so i i, I was very keen to to put that in there and when my grandmother came over to this country just after world war ii you know she was treated appallingly you know you dirty foreigner and she was spat at and it, it was absolutely awful and so I, I I'm very much uh you know it, it, I think children should be made aware well I know they are now but more so than ever before you know there are 
all sorts of different cultures, different languages, different religions. And, you know, but ultimately it's all about love, isn't it? It's all about getting on together, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's really important. And um, the kind of, not just the characters, but you expand kind of the whole world in this book as well, the kind of paranormal world. Uh, Could you introduce us to the um, Society of Paranormal Investigation? And and I love that idea because it's like a mix of kind of the Ministry of Magic and like Jack Bauer's counter-terrorism unit hidden away in a secret base. Um, but I guess that gives you scope to make the next story or future stories huge because now it doesn't just need to be a little school that's haunted. This could be saving the world from ghosts. Absolutely. And it's... Um... <clears throat> It, I really enjoyed that because, as you know, we did a, um, a filmed investigation at the Strands, the Underground, and we also did a live show there. Oh, it's such a creepy, creepy place. Um, and so when I describe them going down into this sort of hidden world and in this lost underground tube station and then sort of walking along the tunnels, I remember what that felt like, you know, and then going in a lift, you know, and it, through this secret doorway and then this whole world is just opened up to them. And I can't wait to write more, about, as you say, more about it. It opens up more realms, more characters, um, you know, there's, there's hauntings all over the world you know that they can be involved with it's just how much time they get off school <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I do have to think now it's got to be a holiday and so this the last book I've just written it's during the Christmas break so that's that's not, that's quite good and I wanted to write a book with a Christmas theme to it I just I love that I love Christmas time and I love books that have a bit of a Christmas you know you get all Christmas oh I'm going to read that book again because it sort of like gets me all in a Christmas mm-hmm. mood you know yeah and of course and ghosts are a big part of Christmas anyway I mean there's the tradition of ghost stories before Christmas and I think a lot of our ideas about ghosts and hauntings now come directly from a Christmas carol I think Dickens kind of embodied what current present hauntings are yeah I agree and I every year without fail Carl and I watch the Alistair Sim um christmas carol and you can't beat that black and white um film and alistair sim is fantastic in it and you're absolutely right you know oh it's it's wonderful so yeah i i I, i'm certainly not saying i'm a dickens by any my god but um no i like that you know that idea of christmas and ghosts definitely i've got to say one that i really enjoyed was (laughs) and was really confused by was the end of the book um because i won't give too much away but because I'd already, you'd already kind of told me that you were heading to Pendle with the story next, at the end of the book, one of the characters kind of heads off in the car and goes somewhere. And I was thinking, I know where they're going. They're up to, going up to Lancashire. And of course, they didn't. They went somewhere completely unexpected. Um, is, is, is that going to be yes, continued? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's exciting because I kind of, I kind of think I know where I'm going with it. But I have all these ideas bubbling in my head, but it's just it's exciting to me that how the SPI is going to build and become this this big thing. It's like a big world that we know nothing about, but it's there protecting us from all sorts of supernatural beings that we're just like, oh, my God, they really exist then. Not just ghosts, but vampires, werewolves, you know, all sorts of creatures that we we. I thought that was just a legend, but the SPI have been dealing with them for hundreds of years and keeping them from harming us, scaring us. Um, But I will say at some point, the SPI uh, have a little bit of trauma themselves. And uh, yeah, and uh, well, anyway, I won't ruin it, but that's what's going on in my in my head. Yeah. Um, And the Ghost Hunters Chronicles obviously is a series. This is book two. Um, You've written book three already, have you? Yeah, I have. So at the moment, the working title, it might change, but, you know, I've written it as The Rise of the Pendle Witches. So I wonder what that's about. Um, (laughs) And uh, yeah, it, it out of the book so far, it's been the hardest one to write because there's there was there's so many characters in it um and to begin with um I had all the condemned witches in there and then it just got so complicated that I just went no in fact it was weird because my computer for no reason just died on me and I lost all my work so I had to and you know how frustrating that was I had to go back and it made me weird I thought no you're making it far too complicated so I rewrote it with Mm less just less characters and now I'm a a lot happier 
uh, with it. So I've it's gone off to the editors and now the editors have just given me final notes and then I'm just just tinkering with it. But I'm happy with 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 it, you know, and and uh, I, uh, I I think we all have a fascination with witches, don't we? And um, but also I had to be careful because, of course, you know, um, a lot of those witches were innocent, you know, apart from, I mean, Demdike, she died actually at the castle, but she, before she died, she actually admitted that she was a witch and that she, you know, she was guilty of the crimes. Um, and on, you know, when we did Pendle Hill, the live show, I always remember it was her that kept coming through, Demdike, Demdike. Mm -hmm. And they were pushing on, uh, we were all aware of this pressure on our Adam's apple and this choking, hanging. And they said, oh, they're making us feel what they went through when they died. And so I've used that in the book. So, you know, people are, you know, being choked and strangled and their ghosts basically come back for revenge of the way that they were treated. And uh, yeah, and they they go after their ancestors, the ancestors of the people that accused them in the first place. Then there's some new characters come in and also a couple of um, situations locations that I think you particularly will enjoy. Okay, interesting. <laughs> um, but obviously, like you've just touched on the live you did, and <clears throat> that was quite a, a brutal one, probably one of your most violent investigations you've done. And you've already got the trend of the kind of first two books getting a little, a little bit darker as they go. So does that mean it's going to take a turn that's even more sinister in this new book? In the, in the one that I've written? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there's a, there's quite a few dark moments in there where I've actually gone, oh, is this too far? You know, but again, going back to my editor and, and uh, you know, them, you know, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. But, you know, for some people, I mean, you've got to remember these books predominantly are for young young people you know I didn't write them for um you know 50 year old mm. uh you know hardened horror fans you know I mean it's tame it will be tame to them um but you know I I mean I couldn't read them because I get scared <laughs> <laughs> as you know I can't watch anything or read anything I don't watch any paranormal programs whatsoever um because I just couldn't I think I I like I say I'm, I'm like a pressure cooker I think I would end up being quite poorly but I have to just stop you know and stop thinking mm. about the paranormal and dark things and watch Mary Poppins a lot <laughs> um as you know you know I like to have a a, 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 a laugh and a giggle and look at the, the light side of things so but I did write the books for me, for my mindset, as it were, because I love, like, I still love reading, like, C.S. Lewis, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, all the Tolkien's books, um, you know, all the Harry Potter books. Um, I absolutely adore that that range of reading. Um, and so um, I'm certainly not saying that mine fits in there. My God, you know, absolutely not. But I, I, I wrote it with how I like to read. So it's very simple gets to the point you know um and I just write what's in my head um I, I don't necessarily go right this is for a young person you know mm. but I, I you know um obviously with um certain things I have to think about oh god that might be a little bit too too far you know but the book um I mean you mentioned like C.S. Lewis and Harry Potter I think this series does definitely fit into that, that kind of big imaginary universe and that sense of adventure that you get in those books and you know as a kid growing up in the 90s it was surrounded by things like Ghostbusters and that influenced us to become a generation of ghost hunters and I think it's, it's stories like yours that have that sense of adventure and make you want to be part of it not just a reader um, which is the reason why I think it really works. Oh thank you and I, I think that it, it's lovely when I go and do like book signings and I meet people and you know on the most haunted events we meet loads of people don't we and mm. they tell me about oh my son can you sign this book for my daughter or whatever oh can, you know are there under 16 ghost hunts coming up and you know they're really keen and there's so many teenagers that are into the paranormal and want to be ghost hunters and I think that's really exciting and I would love to do more under 16 ghost hunts I think that that would be absolutely fantastic um just to encourage the next generation as it were you know and and who knows the next somebody who's about 10 now in 20 10 20 years well 20 years time they might invent something so amazing you know that that 
I don't know, a, a, a huge improvement on EVP that's so insane, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but they started off, like you say, I don't know, watching the Ghostbuster movies, watching Most Haunted, watching, you know, other paranormal programmes that really, you know, get them thinking. It's exciting, isn't it, really? Yeah, and I, I think ghost hunting especially is one of those fields where amateurs are almost better placed than professionals because you can come in to the ghost hunting field with a background or expertise in something else like audio engineering or photography and it's those skills that enable you to think up clever ways to try and detect what we can't see. Exactly, exactly. I mean you look at yourself I mean you know you're very much into tech and all the rest of it and it, it your mind the way it works and everything you know I'm still waiting for an invention that you're going to come up with. <laughs> but my my ultimate invention pretty much would be similar to the tapping board that um, Uncle Rufus invents because um, I mean especially doing some of the events with you guys and hearing the tapping that you get uh, in buildings and and for me I, I'm quite skeptical and I haven't seen a lot but I have experienced a lot of unexplained taps and knocks when I've been at places so for me that's almost a kind of prominent phenomena so if there was a way to just be able to detect the smallest knocks and kind of attribute some value to it and you know really measure and read them i think that would be really interesting that would be that would be absolutely fantastic so hurry up and bloody well invent it so we can <laughs> use it and um but i get very frustrated because as you know i mean i've contacted scientists science new scientist magazine uh we have funny enough we have we're doing a seance with <coughs> excuse me seance with the daily mirror next week because i think it's very important um, for any paranormal investigator, um, particularly if you do a TV show, and that's why we started Most Haunted Experience, and we're the only paranormal TV show that's actually done that, where we've started, come on, we've opened up to mm. the public, come and join us so you can see that we're not making it up. Because if I was watching a TV show, I wasn't involved in this, and it was about the paranormal, and the thing at the beginning is this is for entertainment purposes only, i go, oh, it's all made up. And that's what I get so angry about because you know how passionate I am about Most Haunted and that when we get phenomena, I just get so excited. Um, Mm. So that's why I'm very, very keen to invite journalists, scientists. They should all, all of them, when you think about that knocking and the fact that you can play noughts and crosses with a bloody ghost or you get letters knocked out that make words that make sentences that make names first names surnames the dates they were were at say for instance a prison the date that they were executed then you can get it verified by the records to me that is absolutely fascinating so when you present that to science they should be all over that like a rash yeah you know they should be and i've tried so hard to get them to come on and investigate. We just, inv- uh, just invited um, a journalist from The Guardian to come on an investigation. Because, don't get me wrong, with this type of um, programming, um, of course, people are going to say, you know, not all of them, the majority of them love the show, love like, in paranormal investigating. And they say, you know, oh, it's great. We really believe in it. We love it. It's great. Keep going. But then you do get this sort of handful of people. um, Oh, what a load of old rubbish. It's this, that and the other. Mm. So I want to try so hard. That's why I'm inviting journalists along. I, I just think it's so important. And I think they should witness it, what we're witnessing, what we've witnessed And then once they've witnessed it, I then want to say to the journalist, right, now you get hold of the scientists because they're not listening to me. Mm. You need to get the scientists to come here and measure what is that knocking? What is it? What's it made up of? How is it making that sound? Is it is it a higher vibration slowing down? Is that them talking and that's how we're hearing it? You need to look at this scientists and you need to tell us what it is because something's happening. But because we've reported it on television um you know it's deemed as well it's made up or and i suppose in a way you know going back to the spiritualist movement with the fox sisters they admitted to making it up at the end because they felt so they had to perform it had to perform it had to Mm. all these journalists were coming so in a way it ruined it for the real tapping and rapping and you know in cases going back oh my god 100 years 
the, sometimes the beginning of hauntings in homes, people will report, won't they, weird, unexplained knock, knocking and rapping phenomena within the walls, scratching and so on. Well, shouldn't scientists be really delving into what that, sh- that is? And I know we have the SPR, but I'm sorry, we should be doing an ongoing, year-long investigation into what these noises are. Sorry, I was venting there. I get <laughs> well, that, that's, I, I mean, what you're saying, is, I, I mean, I totally agree with, because um, people do have to experience this for themselves, because um, watching it on TV, no matter how much you trust the team, if something happens, if there's a bang behind you guys in a, you know, wherever you are, as a viewer, we can't know for sure that someone hasn't got into the building that you don't know about or that a door hasn't slammed. So it's not even about whether it's real or fake or whether you have trust or not. It's just that sometimes you have to be there yourself to fully understand the environment and the situation and be able to say, definitely can't explain that. Absolutely. Which is why we started out Most Haunted Experience. And I wish all, pa- if all paranormal TV shows did that, how great would that be then? You know, um, that would be wonderful because, um, and and there's all, <laughs> wouldn't it be great if, if, if human beings didn't have an ego, you know, because there's, there seems to be this sort of like competition between sort of paranormal groups or, you know, paranormal TV mm. programs. It, that should stop. There shouldn't be any of that. We should all be working together. You know, it's all about love. It's all about spiritualism. It's all about finding out the truth. What happens to us when we die? You know, what is a ghost? What's it made up of? How many different types of hauntings are there? Oh, there's a trapped spirit here. How can we help them? So we should all be working together. We should all be sharing our research. We should be, you know, which is what, like I say, what the SPR started out as. Um, uh, I just wish that we, you know, we could all work together together. A lot, a lot more, and also, like I say, it, my God, wouldn't it be marvelous if I don't know we could just do more of um, more locations around around the country, open them up for most wanted experience, so mm. anybody that's interested in the paranormal can come come along and find out that the knocking is real. It's not somebody underneath with a broom. <laughs> Well, you know. trust me, I would have found it if <laughs> if that were the case. I've been on a lot of the events, and um, yeah, and I'm I'm not as afraid to. Uh, look under <laughs> floorboards and behind walls and put my head on the ground and whatever yeah. it takes but that's and, that should be encouraged as well mm. with everybody you know put your torches on as for the most haunted experience events i mean they happen every weekend don't they across the country what's your favorite place to take guests and kind of share that activity with them see recently it's been hat green nuclear bunker i've really enjoyed going there Mm. well I, I was on that event with you and that yeah. that that came to my mind actually because it was a really interesting one yeah and it, and when we first went there as doing an experience it was very quiet and then i've discovered that i think you it's almost like a, i always describe it as a dynamo the more you do the more energy you build and i think because we've been going there quite a lot we've built up a good energy and so more stuff is is happening more noises can be heard we were standing in one room we, we, i heard this breathing it sounded like a man in a gas mask you know uh, it was incredible um and everybody else heard it as well which was great um i have enjoyed bishton hall but it's been quite quiet but the people that have gone there have, have had loads of stuff happening for them you know i had one of my biggest scares at bishton hall did you really what happened well i was just sort of having a wander around the location before the guests arrived so i knew the building was completely empty and i was up on the top floor on my own walked along the corridor on the upper floor and to my right for an open door i heard a growl <laughs> oh! and um, i mean my first reaction was what was that and then just complete fear set in and I, I ran out of that building, I ran down the stairs and I've never been like that before. By the time I got to the main entrance, um, Jenny, the event manager, was letting people in and I was physically shaken. Wow. Um, you know, people could tell I'd seen something. That I, you know, it, but um, yeah, that was one of my scariest experiences there, really. That, that's the thing, isn't it? You mentioned it earlier on it, and it, it's so true. And I always say seeing is believing until you experience something yourself. You know, it's good to be um, open minded about all of this and be logical about it. You know, Mm. so not every bang, not every 
gust of wind is a ghost you know go and check it out but when something happens like that you know don't you you know yourself I didn't imagine it I know what I heard and no one can tell me otherwise and but you see for me I'm like I want to find out who made that growl and why did they do it interestingly Bridgeton does have a pet graveyard so was it even a person I heard or was it mm, yeah yeah, you just don't know, do you? I mean, we went to a shed near the pet cemetery at one particular evening. It was in a, when the weather was really hot. Oh, my God, it was so funny. And all of us were in this shed. Well, we heard the knocking. It was like someone was walking around the outside, just knocking on the back of the door, back of oh, the wall. Right, right. And then we felt the the, the floor banging. And it, it was great. It was really great because it was just a bog standard shed. But that goes back to my theory of, of wood is a fantastic conductor of this knocking phenomena so if you're in a, a wooden a house with old wooden floorboards I get excited because I think oh the knocking will be no, more audible here than if we are in a prison with the you know with the stone yeah. uh, floors. but you still get the knocking don't you and you still hear footsteps in like say for instance Shrewsbury prison or Gloucester prison mm. you still hear it but wood it seems to sort of resonate and Carl's um, we had a stable here um, I'm just pointing to it out there and he's transformed transformed it into a seance room so we've panelled it out inside all with wood um, and we've got our little um, uh, spirit um, cabinet in there pop-up tent and uh, we've got our seance table and we go in there and the knocking is is absolutely fantastic you know it's like a telephone booth to the other side it's marvellous yeah. oh, amazing um anyway well we should probably wrap it up there but um just to let anyone watching know that the book's out on september 29th yeah and it's called um the ghost hunter chronicles the ripper of Whitechapel. and it's having read it i highly recommend it it's very good it's a good oh, it's a good read as a grown-up who loves the paranormal as as well as for kids i'm sure oh that's so lovely of you thank you so much steve and i'll see you very soon i'm sure